Carnegie, my name is Mizan and today I've got a very special car, one that I am so happy to have. It's no other than an Audi RS4 B7 generation. This is Audi's offering against the legendary E92 M3 and the W204 C63. It's the only four-wheel drive option amongst that generation and this is my favourite era of cars because this is before when emission stands were crippling and manufacturers could genuinely go bonkers with their engines. This is the only Audi RS4 that was offered as a saloon. The generations prior and the ones after were all estates. Very late in this car's life did it come out as a cabriolet and an estate. Now me personally, it really matters how a car is drawn and designed by the manufacturer. And because this car was designed as a saloon, I think it really suits it. The rear lights look very proportionate on the back end than if it was an estate. And that for me is why I would pick the saloon if this was my money. This is only the second generation of Audi RS4. The one before it was a 2.7 litre twin turbo V6. So I love the fact that Audi went from turbocharged to NA cars. And this B7 and the B8 were both NA. And I think these two cars for me symbolize what an RS4 is about. A big throaty V8 that revs to a high red line. In terms of price, a B7 RS4 is gonna cost you from 15 grand all the way up to 40 grand. Now, the lower end of that band I've said are going to be quite high mileage and they're going to need a bit of work. The higher end are going to be a collector's car, one that you're going to buy and no doubt this car will obviously appreciate in value. It's worth bearing in mind that if you are going to buy one, they all fall under the high road tax band and that in the UK is currently at £630 a year. Now, don't let that put you off. I paid that much for my R32 and this RS4 is a different league. You're going to be paying that kind of money if you've got an E92 M3 and a C63 anyway, so don't let that put you down. If the price of these is too much, you can always opt for a B7 S4. It's got the same body and it has got a 4.2 litre V8, but it's not the same block. It doesn't redline nowhere near as high as this and you don't get the wide arches and the aluminium body. But the option is there if you really want it. This car is pushing 415 brake horsepower and 430 new meters of torque. That's from a 4.2 litre naturally aspirated V8. That is a very close relative to that you get in the first generation Audi R8. So you're sort of getting a supercar engine in a family saloon. This car is paired with a six speed manual gearbox, which was the only option. No dual clutches here, which obviously was very common back in that day. I mean, even my R32 has got a DSG. So it's very refreshing that even back then, although it was quite rare, we got a manual here. And today that's something unheard of. You're not gonna get a manual with a big V8 like this. This car has obviously got Quattro, which is a Torsen setup, not Haldex, and it sends 60% of the power to the rear and 40% to the front. Audis are synonymous with being known that they understeer a lot, and this car apparently doesn't do that. And the reason for that is obviously the, the Torsen setup, as well as the fact that the front panels are made out of aluminium to make the car lighter. Because as you can imagine, having a heavy V8 v at the front is only gonna make the car nose heavy. And all of the work that Audi has done has made this car handle a lot more better. The other thing I love about this car is it takes inspiration from other cars of the era. Now obviously this engine is very similar to the one we got in the R8, a few things were changed but ultimately it's the same engine and then even the brake pads if you and this you see here, I mean these are 8 pot calipers and these are lifted straight out of a first gen Gallardo and this is what I really miss about this era, it's just crazy crazy engineering and manufacturers arguing to see who can make the best car and I honestly love this generation, I really really do. In terms of modifications, this car is pretty OEM plus. I mean, visually when you look at it, you wouldn't even believe it's been modified. But there's two things to talk about. The first thing, it's got a stage two MRC tune on the car. I don't understand why people tune naturally aspirated cars, but the owners told me there is a lot of benefit which we'll cover when we go for a drive. But the other mod is, it's got a non-resonated Miltec exhaust system with the original tips. So it looks original and factory. Now, without further ado, I think it's time to go for a drive, meet the owner, and see what it's like on the road. to get in this car if I'm honest because the bucket seats but I want to give a nice warm welcome to Shax. Thank you. Yeah thank you for coming down. Thanks, 
thanks for inviting me down, man. Well, the funny thing is, right, I tried approaching you, what, November? No, wait, you started following me. I started following you, what, last year, November? November, so in the winter yeah. months. And when I saw your pro page, I was like, damn, he's got some nice cars. If you go on your, his page, right, he's just got so many E36s. And unpopular opinion, I like the E36 more than an E30. So obviously, I was in love straight away. Then on top of that, he's got this. And I was like, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, thanks for following me kind of thing. Can I get you on the channel? He's like, absolutely. But I don't drive my cars in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> Salt rolls and stuff. So that was left as that. With the W204 C63, you yeah. can only get the auto. With this, you can yeah. only get the manual. Yeah. And then with the E92 M3, you can get both. Yeah. But if you are buying one, the manual is the cheaper car. Yeah. Like, from an investor's perspective, you are at a loss by buying a manual, yeah. even though you might want a manual. Yeah. And it affects the value of a car, which it shouldn't. 100%. Whereas, because this is a manual only, it doesn't matter. It, 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 it's not something that people used to hold it against. Oh, you got the manual, I don't want the manual. Yeah. It's not like, if you want one, you'll yeah. get it. Yeah. And even back then, a manual with a V8 was still very rare. Yeah. So I had a C63 W204 previously, yep. uh, a couple of years back. And one thing that and you couldn't stand was. So there was. There was big thing that always used to bug me um, I don't know if it's the same for other C63 owners yeah but I'd, I'd come out onto the driveway yeah and the front arches are flared out they are they are flared but where was the designer for the rear arches yeah um, also the automatic gearbox so I'm, more of a, I'm, I'm, I'm more of a manual you manual would be sort of kind of guy for a E36 man yeah you yeah so I'm a bit of a dinosaur in, in regards to the cars I like yeah. the, the gearbox on it is it's not bad, it's, it's pretty good, especially when you put it into Sports Plus mode. Then it's mm. actually very, very good, very snappy, especially yeah. when you get it mapped and tuned. Um, very good. Yeah, so speaking of map, why did you map an NA car? Come on, tell me, because you no, said so there's no reason. So this one um, was mapped by MRC Stage yep. 2. And yeah, you, you've asked, didn't it? Yeah. Why would you map, a, map an, an NA, NA car? And but 10 bits be more, right? There's hardly any gain. For the money yeah. you spend, it's not worth, worth the gain. Yeah. But what it does is with these cars, um, for those that don't know, the first three gears from Audi yep. is torque limited. So you can't unleash the full torque of okay. the engine. So, so, so it's, it's limiting the power. Yeah, it limits, it the, limits power. the power, obviously, to protect the engine. Yep. For whatever other reason why they've done it. But So you don't get the full potential out of the car. So mm. that was partly the reason why. I just want to comment on a few things whilst uh, I'm not mm. driving. The first thing is carbon everywhere. It is beautiful. Yeah. But so the, I think this is standard option though. No, nah, you can get the uh, silver trim. aluminium silver uh, trim. Okay, in that case then, smart, that's, smart, that's really stunning. Yeah, so the carbon... It, it, it yeah, lifts the interior. Because like remember, these cars are very basic, they're very analog. So mm. by having the carbon, it lifts the interior. Um, the other thing is that steering wheel is identical to uh, Gen 1 Gallardo. Yeah, that's straight lifted out of Gallardo. Literally, even the butters yeah. on the steering wheel. Everything. They're so minimalistic. Yeah. It's out of a Gallardo. The brakes are out of a Gallardo. I mean, I don't think they need you to do that. I mean, eight pot kind yeah, of. Yeah, I think I think they did go over the top um, with the brakes because this sort of size you'd never see on a, on a car this uh, range. No. Yeah, uh, eight pot brakes. No. You'll just see probably top six, pot six maybe exactly. Uh, but Not four, standard, definitely yeah, six. About four to six pots, but yeah, they were just bonkers. They just went and straight lift the brakes out. Of I love that though, man. And Good. they also done an optional ceramic. So you know what? It's like um, is it the RS one? Like they had a Porsche develop, Porsche helped the make RS2, that car. Yeah. The RS2, thank yeah, you, yeah, not the RS2. The RS2, yeah. the RS2, like Porsche helped make that car. They had Porsche yeah, brakes so on it. Just, they had a Porsche engine under was, the bonnet. That was just a standard estate Audi. But with that, the, but that, that Porsche basically took them yeah, built and built in a way. Porsche sort of tuned it and, and put Porsche brakes on it. So and a similar sort of the thing with here, where with, it's got Gallardo bit, got Lamborghini parts. DNA, so you got you got the 4.2, which was in the R8. But, but this is the thing: why the hell don't VW do that anymore? Why do they not use the group that they have, Bentley, um, Lamborghini? Why don't they use all these brands to just make these crazy cars? They don't do it. Uh, honestly, Apart from the R8, what in the modern age is something that is it's just nuts? Yeah. So yeah, this car has got the wing back seats. Now these wing back seats look. Magnificent. I think as an option, you have to have these. Can you get these without the wingback seats? So you can get it as an SE. Um, SE yeah, seats. so you can just get SE like, seats. Like big seats. sofa leather seats. Yeah, yeah. Now, so they've not got the, but yeah. the flare on them. The what I'd say to so. that is they're probably more comfortable. You probably enjoy it. But it's not. You, you have to get it. It's, this is a track car, essentially. How can you have yeah. How can you have Lamborghini rigs but sofas? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so the reason That's why. That's a must. I agree. So the reason why I mentioned it is these wingback back seats are identical to the ones that you can get in a Golf R32. Mm -hmm. They're identical, yeah, it's just that yeah. Bajan says R as well. My ones will say R, yeah. the R logo. It's just the stitching is different, and that's it. Exactly. That's it and these seats are not that comfortable, if I'm honest with you. They are, they look stunning. They're very track force. They're really keeping me in place, but there's not enough padding. And yeah. I can't spread my legs because the bolsters are so wide on the sides. That sounded wrong, bro. What 
What do you mean, man? <laughs> I, I, I'm, I, listen, I'm a bloke. I, 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 I can't have my legs crossed. I, I need some. I need some ventilation. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, no, fair enough. Yeah. So we're yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. quirkiness. Yeah. We talked about quirkiness. Yeah, we live with it. Yeah. We love it. We're happy it's got so it. All these little flaws in a car is what gives a character, car, car, character. character personality. Um, no matter how stupid it might yeah. be, it's just yeah. it's like that's what they did, man. It's funny. Yeah, that's that, it. But I'm sorry, but there's not enough people like me and you out there. Not enough. But you know what? I feel like we've done enough talking. We now I need to see what it's like, man. So you know what, Shax? Show me what this is about, man. Oh, 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 yo. You know what? This is talking. Oh my god, that V8 sounds amazing. Ah, oh, you know what? You know, you know how people talk about lazy V8s? Yeah. This is not a lazy no. V8. It's very high revving. Yeah. Um, so anyone that's driven an E92 M3 or one of these is so high 8250 your RPM? Yeah, it goes up to about 8250. That's um, amazing. Because uh, the E92s are around 8,500, yeah. 9,000. Yeah. Or maybe 8,750. Yeah. And the C63s is literally 7,000, maybe yeah. 7,250 yeah. at the most. Ah, oh, the noise. You know what? But yeah, it's a very linear, linear power, power delivery. Yes. It, and just goes, it just loves to rev and it, it just eggs you on. Um, but yeah, you get it into the right gear, yeah. and it's this throttle response. Like you just jab at the throttle, and it just look. If the uh, car didn't have no torque, it wouldn't do that yeah. to us. So the car has got. A lot torque. of people say at the time it doesn't have torque, but until you've driven one, it does have torque. I think that stage two maybe yeah. had a uh, yeah. different start to yeah, this. Definitely, though. it's mapped where the torque comes in a lot earlier. Oh, but you know what, man? Until you drive one, honestly, it's... I love the fact that you're changing gears yourself, man. It's that no. No DSG bands, no nothing. It's just straight use. It's part of the experience. I used, to, I, I, I once drove an Audi R8, right? For the original first gen, so same engine. Oh my god, the Quattro is amazing. Yeah. Like you, you have so much confidence, don't you? You can honestly really throw it. This is a proper driver's car, yeah, and, and, and that's something car. that you know what you can't say a lot about most Audi cars. This So much personality and character, guys. So much. And the thing about NA cars is you get to wring its neck. Yeah, yeah. You can just wring its neck and at least the full tank yeah. was on a turbocharged car. Yeah. You get the reward so low down sometimes that you don't even bother revving it out. It honestly makes me really sad that cars like this don't exist. I only have to jump in something like this. Honestly, I'm exactly the same. And sometimes you sit down and think, Where the, where's the so, one gone? So I'm now in the uh, RS4 and I have to be honest, never driven a Lamborghini, I've driven an R8. The steering wheel makes you feel like you're, de you're driving an actual Gallardo, uh, that's me being honest. Um, when you drive a W1204 CCTV, which I have on the channel, ultimately it's not different to you know, a normal C-Class AMG line. And um, the E92 M3, it's like an M Sport. Yeah. This feels really, really cool. Like, this steering wheel is so minimalistic like it's it's not a multi-function it's, it's not a multi-function steel but it's also not an empty steering wheel you have these buttons that are just bare i don't know how to describe it and that gear knob is it's honestly beautiful it's again so minimalistic surrounded by carbon i don't know how audi do it audi know how to make a car feel special but also minimalistic you have to give props to them don't you this is the thing every car has its quirks yeah advantage disadvantage none of them seem to have it all on smash yeah. none of them yeah. seem to be the best what gives it the individuality of each exactly. of the cars and that's why you want them all exactly that's why you want them that's all. why i love all three of them they're, yeah. they're, they're, those three are some of my favorite cars ever made absolutely those three and if i could i'd have all three absolutely yeah. and this one i've noticed right i think your intercooler makes a bit of a whine noise isn't it it's not an intercooler what, what is that um radio it's, it's, it's just the whining it's just a distinctive feature of the, of, of of the, the engine. engine yeah it's just um the whirring noise of a B7 RS4. Yeah. I don't know why it's always done that. When you're cruising, it's it like a humming. Feels, it's almost like a supercharger, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, you know what? The gearbox does feel really, really good. Really good. And that steering is so incredibly weighted. Yeah, they got it right. I've not had such steering feedback in such a long time. Uh, this car is so modern yet so old at the same time. It's, yeah. it's that perfect point in time yeah. that it's the best of both worlds. Yeah. Um, and that's what I genuinely do love about this car right now. It's just, it's just a bit of both. You don't get mm. that. You just don't get that today. Um, 
I mean, a flat bomb steering wheel, that wasn't even really much of a thing back then. No, no, now no. it's something that people honestly die for. This car is, um, in, it can be civilized when you want it to. It can be civilized. It is trying to be civilized. Mm. Uh, right now, as you as you mm. can see, I'm not I'm not really pushing on because mm. I'm trying to get a feel for the car. Mm. It's an old girl as well. We don't want to just start you know yeah. thrashing it straight away. But as a daily driver, it can be done. But it's a lot of work. I do think that if you if you want to buy one of this generation, I think if you if you're gonna get it, I think the W two or four, the E nine twenty three with the DCT is probably the easy. The gearbox yeah. makes a big difference. Yeah. It, this is harder to daily, there's no way around it. Yeah, de definitely. I mean, if you want that sort of generation car where you want a natural aspirated V8, but you want to use it often, then yeah, this car isn't it's really not for you. you. Um, it's not for you. This is the only one that's four wheel drive out of the three. Yeah. And the thing about the other two here, right? So the C63 hasn't got an LSD, which means it's proper Larry yeah. at any speed. Although you can get ones with LSD yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. but it's, it's a very rare. You have to yeah. option it. Yeah. Our people retrofit obviously themselves after. Yeah, of course. But um, what it comes down to is the. The C63 is very leery and, and you can have fun with it at low speeds even mm. the way it reacts with the um, M3 it comes with an LSD from factory mm -hmm. um, and again rear wheel drive you can have fun with that you don't yeah. have to be doing crazy yeah, yeah. speeds yeah. just take it a nice, a nice, a, around a nice bend and you'll feel the car working for you with, with cars that are four wheel drive I always feel the need that you know what you really need to push it to the limit of the road if it's a 60 mile per hour road mm -hmm. you better be doing 60 mile per hour yeah, yeah, road, yeah. you know and that's the trap that this car falls into. It has to be driven to its limit mm -hmm. to be enjoyed. Uh, what was the color? The gray? Uh, Daytona gray. Daytona gray. Yeah. The way I see it is the RS4 is like a suit. You can only buy it in certain colors. Like, I'll be honest here, even the C63, you could argue, is a bit of a suit. Mm -hmm. Whereas the E923, you can get in Japan red or Sandrini mm -hmm. blue. Mm -hmm. The RS4, you had a red one, Milano red. Yeah, but, but I, I don't. I didn't, yeah. I, I didn't like the idea of that because. Yeah. Again, it's like, would you buy a red suit? No, you wouldn't. Yeah, no, I get your point, and I think with as time gone on, I look back and I think this color suits it more. This feels so familiar with the R8 Gen 1. So familiar. Yeah. Those two cars, I think, changed the RS, RS game. Oh, it's so, so good to drive a manual car, shifting between two to three. Uh, when you are pushing on, you forget that the clutch needs a bit of work. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And, and there's a certain way to drive it. Yeah, and you remember, hold on, hold yeah, on. I'm yeah. rushing it. I'm yeah, rushing yeah. it. Don't rush the clutch. Wow. There's so much. You know, there's so much thinking to do. Because this car It's not just a case of just planting your front no, and turning the it's, not, it's not like the automatic cars that no, I drive on the channel It's too easy isn't it on the new yeah. cars Too easy I'm like I've got so much to think about Especially that clutch like, I don't wanna I don't And then especially when you start rev matching and stuff Yeah It's, it's a different ball game Like we were talking about those two plates Hitting each other and I'm not trying to do that but It's so oh. rewarding at the same time When so you do get it right It is It's very rewarding oh, It's got so much personality Oh my god for an Audi as well, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> this must be wearing a BMW badge. I'm telling you, man. There was, there was, there was a rogue employee in the BMW M department yeah. <laughs> that was working for Audi at the time or doing some part-time work. This car has got so much percent. It's not shouty like the like the M3 or the C63. Mm. It's just it just gets on with the business. Honestly, what a car! I don't say that often about four-wheel drive cars. I really don't. Because they tend to be boring, don't they? They do. I love that whining noise there, man. It's still supercharged. Yeah, Genuine, it feels supercharged. It feels supercharged. And I love supercharged. That's turbocharged for me is the bottom of my list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, supercharged. It's, actually, it's NA for me. Supercharged, and then I don't even mind supercharged because yeah. there's no. There's no lag. There's it? no lag. Yeah, there's no lag. There's no effect yeah. to the noise. And you get that whining noise exactly. as well. That adds to the experience. Oh my God, man! That's a small button. No, not yet, not yet. <laughs> I'm still, still, the nose doesn't feel heavy in no. the slightest. If I'm gonna say it, it feels like driving a mid-engine supercar. That that's how evenly distributed the weight is. It's like driving the R8, yeah, isn't they, it? They've got it bang. They've on. got it bang on. And until you drive one, you're just gonna always see it as that prejudice against yeah. all drive Audis. You know what? I'm gonna stop talking about the C3 and the M3. You know why? This car isn't competing against those cars. This is a saloon R8. 
That's it. There's <laughs> a good way of putting it. It's a saloon R8. So if you're looking to buy one of these, that's what you're getting for your money. Forget about the C forget about the C63. Forget about the E92. I think now I want to put into sports mode, so I press this on the steering wheel. Yeah, you just press it once and then you'll notice a massive difference on the throttle response. Oh. Totally different. This has come alive! It's totally different. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! I wasn't expecting you <laughs> like that! Oh. Is that someone just fed it a bit of a protein shake? <laughs> no! Oh my god! Because back then, sports mode wasn't really much of a thing. Like, I mean, it was I mean, not, not in 2005. No, it wasn't a thing. How did they do that? I'm gonna go against, I'm gonna say something really big right now. And before I do, oh, God, let it? me just try this road. This drives better than the C63, I said it. It does, isn't it? It drives better than the C63. That's why. I said it. That's why I bought it again. I said it. And I don't want to repeat myself, because they start saying I love my mum my more than my dad. So I'm not going to repeat myself, but I said it. All right, rewind it if you want to hear it again. <laughs> I ain't saying it again. That sports button changes everything! They changed the whole car! They went from an Audi S4 to an RS4. That's what I've done. <laughs> It's not obnoxiously loud. It's not growling like the C63 does, but it's enough. It's a pure driving experience. Pure driving That's experience. What it is. I can't believe how good this car feels. Oh my. I'm honestly in shock. I'm so in shock. When I used to watch the Top Gear episode where they had all three of yeah, us together, yeah. I was always stuck between the Merc and the Beamer. I never picked the Audi. Never in my life. I promise you, I never mm -hmm. picked it. I'm not gonna lie and say I did. I always roll it up. I'm like, it's an Audi. It's not the same. Yeah. Four wheel drive. Yeah. It's not the same. But the gearbox makes up for that. Yeah, for me, it's just the best modern direct car you can buy. God. What a driving machine. This the, maybe the first ever Audi. I can say the ultimate driving machine that they can take they, they, instead of war strong technique or whatever the hell they say maybe they can say the ultimate driving machine for once isn't it it's just so good it's it's so unadulterated there's no emissions there's what stop, there was nothing stopping manufacturers from building these the way they planned they, they were just oh. in a war if we could build bigger engines exactly and cars. they weren't drawing it thinking oh don't forget that oh oh Jurgen or whatever the engineer's name was don't forget about the P, uh, OPF we can't we can't design the car without the OPF oh don't forget this don't forget that there was none of that they just built these as they planned and this gearbox is rosetta stone is it rosetta stone the company that does the translations for you i think it is yeah rosetta stone <laughs> literally i say give it some beans convert it to german engine does the job honestly guys I said it again, I'm, and I'm gonna repeat it. I think it, it drives, the word drives, better than a C63, 100%. Oh God, man, just put the windows down. Everyone needs a V8 in their life, everyone. You need a V8, isn't it? If you've not experienced it, you need to experience it, a V8. Like, it's, it's the best engine. It can't be a car enthusiast and not experience a, V8. a big V8. The RS4 is the most understated of the golden era and with the manual only configuration, it doesn't appeal to the masses. That's not a bad thing though. Shax is the first person I've met that owns a B7, whereas the other cars are a dime a dozen, which says a lot about the RS4. It's a proper driver's car. This is his second RS4 after having owned a C63 AMG and although he's not owned an E92 M3, he's driven them, so bear that in mind. Ultimately, you can't go wrong with any of the trio, but don't write off the RS4 like I did once upon a time. As a younger chap, I couldn't appreciate the Audi, but now, I think it's a bigger badge of honour than the other two, because you're not mentioning how big the bulge in your trousers are with the RS4. Forget about the BMW Mercedes for a second, because this is the Galados and r love child that no one wants you to know about. Until now that is. If you enjoyed this video, do remember to like, comment, share and subscribe, and we'll see you soon for the next one. Take care.